What's going on guys? In this one we're going to be doing a creamy garlic buttery leek soup and then on top of that we're also going to be making a bacon apple and sage crust to go on top once the soup's been done and both of these together taste absolutely incredible and they're so easy to make. Please sit back, relax and enjoy. Alright guys, let's start this off with the prep and for this one we're going to need four large leeks that have had their green tips removed and have been washed to remove any dirt. Let's slice off the root which could be safe for a stock as well as the green stems if you've had to remove them. With our clean leek, slice it in half to make it easier to work with, slice it in half lengthways, then with it laying flat, slice this up nice and thin, trying your best to get it as even as possible for even cooking times. But it doesn't matter too much for a recipe like this as it's all going to be cooked down to the point that it can be blended and once that's all done you should have all of this. Next, get yourself four small all-rounder potatoes or three large ones, and it doesn't really matter which potatoes you use for this, and with these, slice them into three or four even-sized chunks, flip them over and lay them flat for safety, slice them in half lengthways, rotate them 90 degrees, and make three to four even-sized slices, which will create even-sized cubes. Also, again, size doesn't matter too much, but do take into consideration that the larger they are, the longer they will take to cook, so smaller is better for this one. We're then going to need three large freshly peeled garlic cloves that have had their woody roots removed and saved for a stock. Place the side of your knife on top of them with the blade facing down and push down to crush which will activate the allicin compound then come through and give these a rough chop which doesn't need to be super fine and you can just crush them without chopping them if you want to make it easier for yourself now for our topping here is 120 grams or 4.2 ounces of streaky bacon which comes from the pork belly rather than the back bacon but both are fine to use either stack them up and do this all at once or do it rasher by rasher and slice into medium sized strips lengthways getting them as even as possible in size once that's done rotate the strips 90 degrees and come through to dice these into medium to large size pieces again staying consistent with the size and the larger pieces are good as this will shrink in size once cooked Grab yourself one large apple with the variety being up to you and I'm personally using a Royal Gala which has a really nice sweet flavor. This can then be peeled either using a peeler or sharp knife and with the apple peels you can do whatever you want with them but a good way to avoid waste is candy them with a traditional sweet syrup and if you're interested I'll leave a little recipe in the description below and maybe make a short video showing how it's done only of course if you're interested so let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that or something similar along those lines. Now that this is peeled, stand the apple up so it's not wobbling and slice around the core getting as close to it to avoid wasting any of this delicious apple flesh. Then with the chunks, you can do this however you'd like, but I like to slice each chunk in half to make them nice and thin. Lay them flat, make three to four even slices across, rotate at 90 degrees and dice this into nice small cubes similar to the potato but a lot smaller and the smaller the pieces, the better caramelization will achieve on them, leaving us with these little beauties. Last but not least, here is 15 leaves of fresh sage that have a combined weight of 12 grams or 0.4 ounces. Stack them up together nice and neatly and come through to slice into even sized strips. And if you have small leaves, you can leave them whole and skip this step completely. Now for the soup, place a large pot over medium high heat, added three tablespoons or 42 grams of clarified butter or regular unsalted butter and allow it to melt. Let's then chuck in the thinly sliced leek, making sure to get every last piece in there, also adding in the roughly chopped or crushed garlic for that delicious infusion, and whilst mixing regularly, saute the leek and garlic for 5 minutes, which will allow it to start breaking down, releasing its subtle, sweet and slightly tangy flavour, also absorbing that butter, creating the most delicious smooth flavour, and what you'll end up with is something that looks like this. Next, we can add in the evenly cubed potatoes along with a generous pinch of sea salt flakes and cracked black pepper if you wanted to and continue sauteing and moving it regularly for one minute, which will give enough time for the potatoes to start taking on that delicious buttery flavor and garlic aroma. Also, try your best to remove any ingredients that may be stuck on the side of the pot and the only leak you'll ever want in your pot is this one. With that bad joke aside, pour in one liter or four cups of vegetable or chicken stock or both if you wanted to use up ingredients, then give this a really good mix through to allow those flavors to become friends, increase the heat to high and bring this all to a boil. Once boiling, give it another quick mix through to keep those flavors moving, then reduce the heat to low, place on a lid or aluminium foil if you don't have one and simmer for 30 minutes undisturbed. Now after 30 minutes, remove the lid or foil, being careful of the escaping steam and pouring my favorite ingredient, which is 180 milliliters or three quarters of a cup of thickened cream or whipping cream, which will create a beautiful texture. And with this staying over a low heat, mix the cream through completely and cook for one minute to allow it to absorb that incredible buttery leek flavor. Also, if you can't consume dairy, I'll leave a note in the description so you can still make this recipe. 
Now as for blending, I'm using an immersion blender which I find is the best tool, but if you don't have one and only have a food processor or a blender, you will need to take this off the heat and let it cool for about 45 minutes. If you don't do this, you'll run the risk of expanding the blender bowl and it exploding and breaking, causing serious damage to either yourself, your house or both. In saying that, it doesn't always happen, but it really isn't worth taking the risk. And also, once this is blended, it can be kept in the pot and moved to a low flame over a new burner to stay hot. For the delicious topping, place a large pan over medium-high heat and add in 1 tablespoon or 14 grams of clarified butter or regular unsalted butter and allow it to melt. Add in the large diced streaky or back bacon pieces, definitely not wasting any of this, and then give this a quick 30 second mix around so its fat can start to render out and release its flavor into the butter. And you can also do this without butter if you prefer, but the apples that we're now going to add in pick up an incredible golden caramelization from it. Let's then keep this moving frequently and fry for three to three and a half minutes, just until the bacon starts to get deeply golden and starts heavily crackling. Also looking out for that very light caramelization on the apples, which having that sweet and savory flavor together really allows neither of them to over overpower each other and work together to create a perfect flavor combination and friendship. Now after about 3 minutes we'll start to see some really great color on both the bacon and apple. Turn the heat down to low and cook for one more minute and during this time the apple will have locked in all of its flavor but lowering the heat now will allow it to start releasing some of its moisture which will act as sort of like a glue to pick up a lot of that flavor that may be stuck on the pan which will really take the flavor of this to the next level. Also keep it moving regularly. Once that's done, introduce the chopped sage or whole leaves depending on the size and whilst moving it around frequently, increase the heat back to medium high and cook for a further one minute. What the sage is now going to do is pick up all of that delicious flavor and make it extremely crispy, creating buttery bacon and apple sage chips that will give our final product a really nice texture on top. And after all of that's done, this can then be removed from the stovetop. As for serving this up, gently and carefully ladle that delicious soup into bowls with this recipe being the perfect amount for four servings. Then come through with that bacon, apple and crispy sage mixture, gently laying it over the top. And we can also hit this up with some cracked black pepper for that nice finishing touch. Leaving us with this beautiful and incredibly tasty creamy garlic and buttery leek soup with that fantastic bacon, apple and crispy sage crust topping. One last thing that we can't forget is to serve this alongside some crusty toasted bread with sourdough being a great choice. And for that very last step, let's make this beautiful and delicious recipe all worthwhile. While, and that is we can then dig in.